Hi, Sarah! Hi, Father! I wasn't expecting you. What brings you here? I was just visiting other places here in Lithuania to deepen their culture. So you're in the right place. Sveta Regional Park has its central theme, the ancient Baltic mythology. And legends and sagas has always gone hand in hand with the cultural development of a population. So you're right. I'm definitely the perfect place to start my journey. And can you tell me something more? Of course, as a volunteer here, my job is to accompany our tourists to discover the beauties of the park and the story that runs through it. So, we can go. Let's go. What is this? This is the Tree of Life. It shows how once man approached the environment and their interpretation of the structure of the world. And you can also find it in the cultural heritage as a typical window decoration. Ah, very interesting. But so this is not a real tree, isn't it? No, of course it's not. Uh, as a regional park, our main goal is the protection of landscape and biodiversity. But I can show you something similar, follow me. Okay. Wow, this is actually really huge. But how old is it? 600 years old. This oak is part of our natural heritage, but it's not the only charming place in this park. We also have a mythological path through the forest with statues carved in stone, representing the main gods of the Lithuanian pantheon. So, Sarah, there must be a lot of sagas and legends connected with nature here, but do you know them all? I'm working on it, but it's a never-ending learning process. <laughs> so did you take a lesson? Kind of, actually. Our nature school is another big part of the work here in Silveta, but let me show you something. As a volunteer, I'm here both to learn and to help with children and educational programs. Or, sometimes, just as a photographer, as you can see from the amount of pictures. So, this is literally a magical place, isn't it? <laughs> it's true. But now it's time to go. I have to visit Stefania from Aksatia National Park, just 20 kilometers from here. Oh, okay, so have a nice trip. Thank you, bye. Bye. Oh, Sara, hello, nice to meet you. Hello, I was looking for you, but what's going on here? This is Mad Copies, the big eating celebration. In the past, it was a sacrifice to Australia, the goddess of bees, and a celebration of bee mates. Yes, it's a deep friendship equal to a blood relationship. There are so many amazing aspects of the pagan relation between people and bees in Lithuania. Bees were sacred, were part of the family and were highly respected. We ended up well in this country. All these pagan traditions about nature are inspiring. That's right. But what are you doing here? I'm taking pictures of the event. As a volunteer, I try to help with monitoring with tourists and also with the organization of events. Oh, that's nice. As you can see, in the museum you can discover about honeybees, about legends, traditions and how beekeeping developed. And important, you can also understand the value of bees. In the granary you can see some plants, 
These are just few examples of the thousands of plants that are pollinated by bees. Oh, so the park is a good place for cultural and environmental education. Exactly. Now come with me, we move from bees to dragons. Oh, okay. It's so high, so it's true that we created natural plants and there are hills. Yes. But where is the dragon? Um, actually we are on it. This is Shiriniskes Ridge, also called the dragon spine. Oh. It's a moraine left from the glacier in the last ice age. All the area was shaped by the glacier, which created such a special place, with more than 120 lakes, about 150 kilometers of rivers, and specific habitats for many and rare species. This place is amazing. It feels like being on an island in the middle of the lake. Well, these you can see are six different lakes, and on this hill, Pagan people used to make sacrifices to uh, the goddess Leda, the great mother of the earth. And still it's an important place for celebrations. Tourists come here to really enjoy nature, mostly without damaging it. Indeed, the staff of the park guide people around, so they can appreciate this magic place, but also understand why it is important to protect the cultural and natural heritage. Do you also have guided tours? Yes, in English and also in Italian. Oh, great, so you're studying a lot of things. Sure, this is a big part of volunteering here. You learn about the local nature and the local culture. I agree. So, Sarah, this is my super boat. Now I go to visit the Venta Regional Park. Okay, just pay attention to the boat because these kind of trips are full of surprises. Okay, bye! Bye bye! Stefania, I'm doing some bird monitoring. How about you? I'm visiting the Venta Regional Park from Oxeti and National Park. Which bird are you monitoring? Well, today I'm specifically monitoring for Kingfisher. Oh, awesome. Do you want to ride? Sure. Kingfishers are in the red list of endangered species. In fact, there are so few of them that every year there is a monitoring to maintain control of their numbers. As an Erasmus Plus volunteer, I managed to take part in it to help with the conservation efforts. Really, nature in the Venta Regional Park is fascinating, with hundreds of higher pine species, more than 100 species of birds, including the lesser spotted eel and the black stork, and so many, many more species of animals. Over here, we all work for the conservation. So what do you want to do now that we finished monitoring? Isn't that a papilla exposure? Let's go there! and she was just helping me with some kingfisher monitoring. Oh, great. Yeah, we saw this beautiful exposure and decided to stop by. Oh, it's a great choice. Could you tell us something more about it? Sure. The Jurassic outcrops in Papile and its vicinities are unique in the Baltic region and are of great scientific significance. The outcrops attract researchers of Jurassic period and are visited by students of geology from Vilnius University each summer. Due to the long history of investigation, Rich collections of fossils from Papile are exposed in geological museums of many European cities, with more than 300 species of fossils having been identified in Jurassic rocks present here. Oh, I think there are so many things uh, to see around here. Yeah, 
This tower is not only 50 meters high, but it is perfect for a wonderful view of the expressive valley of the Venza River, Papilla Town, and its attractions. As volunteers, we normally work a lot around here, helping the staff maintain the park in the best conditions to receive visitors. How interesting! By the way, is it little Papilla, the place where Simona Sauka was here? Yes, indeed. And actually, Alessandro went to meet him earlier today. Would you like to go meet him? Yes, sure. Hi, Alessandro. Hi, guys. Stefani so wants to meet your friends. I have to go to the visitor center, but I'll meet you guys soon. Bye. Bye, see you soon. So you're waiting for him here? Well, actually, my friend is already here. Oh, hi, Simonas. I hadn't seen you there. So how long have you been living in Papilla? I moved to Papilla in 1861, so not that long ago. <laughs> I died here in 1864, but truly, I am alive in the heart of all Lithuanians, being the first historian and author to start writing in their native language, Lithuanian. I have stayed in this region due to its cultural offers, amongst them my house here in Papilla, which nowadays is the Simona Daukentes Memorial Museum, or for example, the Pharmacy Museum in Viachne, which operates out of one of the oldest pharmacy buildings in the entire country. Hey Alessandro, don't you also have a museum at your visitor center? Indeed we do, Simonas, and now we are going there to meet Antonio. You stay here, don't go anywhere, and see you soon. Hi, let's go. This visitor center was built in 2015, and it houses an exhibition that really details the best parts of Venta Regional Park in all its aspects, natural, paleontological, and cultural. It is our pleasure to work here as volunteers, and to be able to receive tourists from all over the world, and it is definitely not a problem to interact with everybody, since we at the park can speak seven different languages. Lithuanian, English, Russian, Polish, Italian, Portuguese and Spanish. So, don't be shy, come and visit! So Stefania, do you like our exposition? Sure, it's so interesting. But where is Antonio? Mm, I might know where he is. So, let's go and join me. So do you see Antonio? Traveling to other parks is a very cool experience. And you also learn many things about Lithuanian nature, culture and what other volunteers are doing here. You're right guys. I have a friend at Payora Original Park. I think I'm gonna go and check what he's doing right now. See you! Bye! Bye. Sea. Amber settles on the beach after a great storm has occurred and the sea calms down. From the 13th century, residents have used long hand nets called scoop nets. Oh, I see. You really have a beautiful landscape here. It's really majestic. 
The Dutchman has landscape preserved in Bayou's Regional Parks, covers 123 hectares of plots. The highest point is called the Dutchman Hats Hill and it is available during the rise above the sea at 24 meters and was blown over by a mooring ridge. And this is the highest cliff of the seashore in Lithuania. But now it's finished uh, the rest and it's come back to work. Do you want to join me? Sure, let's, let's go! go. job is to feed the fish of this aquarium where we can find the flora and the fauna of the Baltic Sea. You do here? We also monitoring the local fauna by using a trap camera and this period uh, the camera caught a uh, picture of uh, deer, crane, and wild pigs. And now I need to monitoring the cormoran. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! So Claudio, why are we here and why are we dressed like this? We came here because we need to monitor in the cormorant and we have this, uh, this suite because this bird attack a lot. Ooh, yeah, like nobody wants to be covered in cormorant poop, I guess. No, definitely no. You must know that until 2015, cormorants came here just to rest or to eat. But from 2016, they started to settle here and the population has grown a lot in the last three years. In fact, in 2016, the number of nests was 86 and last year's this number increased a lot, arrived 550 nests. And now let's go to count how many nests there is this year. Mm -hmm. So Claudio, how many nests did you count? I count 400 nests. Oh, I count 350. Yeah, the total is 750. Oh, the population is growing. Wow. Wow, it was really a good day at work today. Thank you for your help. Oh, it's Claudio, anytime. And now after work, it's really a good time to go swim in the Baltic Sea. I love to, but uh, I need to go to meet one of my friends when I reach on five. Of course. See you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. Hi, Chiara! Oh, hi, Claudio! I was waiting for you. Welcome to the regional park of Tituvene. Thank you, oh, but it's a little bit colder this morning. Oh, yes, uh, I have a, a towel in my backpack. Oh, cool! What are you doing here? 
I'm cutting reeds. Oh, why? Are they important for the ecosystem? Oh, yes, they are. But the overgrowth occupies sites of other plants and the shores become inaccessible to the holiday makers. Due to human impact and for the fertilizer, reeds grow faster and higher. And it's also important to take the cut reeds out from the water because they could deposit on the bottom and the lake could silt up, accelerating the process of transformation of the lake in swamp. I'm very impressed, but are you the only one who does this work? Oh no, I'm not. Every summer a lot of people are involved in cutting rates, like locals, ABS and international volunteers, the directorate of the regional park of Tituvanai and also the municipality. As an ABS volunteer, I'm glad to help the society to take care of the environment. I feel useful. Oh, cool. I can help you? Not now. Probably you are tired for the trip. So, I have a surprise for you. Come with me. Okay. I'm really curious for the surprise. It's a party? A kind of. You missed the feast of Tituvelo at the end of August. I have some pictures. Oh, they saw me. I can show you. It's the biggest event here in Tituvenai. I helped for the organization. It was instituted in 2010 as a simple trip by bike. Now there are a lot of activities and competition for adults and children. Cool. Which activities? For example, you can play volleyball, basketball, paddling, race by bike and others. After the award ceremony for the winners, there are usually local bands who sing and play. The night hands with dances. Oh, it's a pity. We'll be for the next year. But now I want to know the surprise. Let me show you. Oh, wonderful view. What are they? They are cranes. Really amazing, amazing. Every year, hundreds of them come from Scandinavia at the end of September. They stay in Lithuania for about two weeks and then they move for the winter reaching warmer countries um, in Southern Europe and Northern Africa. Crane is also the symbol of our park because this area has one of the most important swamps in Lithuania, where cranes gather here. Now for me, it's time to go to the Gemaitia National Park. So see you soon. See you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. National Park. Oh great, you won't be disappointed. But what are you doing with this? Oh, uh, this is an entomological net and I was doing a butterfly monitoring. Mm. Uh, you know, as a volunteer here, I often help ecologists to monitor and preserve our precious biodiversity. But now, you see, the sun is gone, so... But I think you will be tired. Uh, why don't we go to our visitor center and get a cup of coffee, maybe? Yes, I really need it. Okay, come on. Gemaitia National Park. 
established in 1991 to preserve landscapes, culture and traditions of this region, Sumagiti region. And the lake too! Do you know that this lake is the deepest, the cleanest and the largest one of all Sumagiti region? Wow, amazing! And what's here? Here is all about nature. You can touch wood, smell flowers, for example, see and read about different wild animals and hear their calls too. Can I try? Yes, please. Wow! Cool, isn't it? It is. But you also talk about uh, culture and tradition. Yes, yes. Uh, let's go downstairs. I will show you something really, really unique in Platile. This is the widest and most peculiar exposition of Ujga Venus, the traditional shrub tide. Here are stored more than 200 handcrafted masks. Even if this is a Christian celebration, here it is still strongly connected with the seasonal victory of spring or winter and every character has a specific meaning. What a surprising place! Can I try one of them? Yes, of course! Wait, I should have one here. Where is it? Okay! Whoa! Oh, what is this? Where are we now? Well, this is a Soviet anti gas mask, and here we are in the very first underground missile base ever built in Soviet Union. Oh wow! <laughs> Is it allowed to stay here? Yes, this base has been restored in 2012 and now it hosts the, the Cold War Museum. one of the four missile silos of the base. They used to contain nuclear rockets. Wow, and, and now? And now you can see it inside. Over there, there is the old entrance, mm -hmm. and we will see inside. It should be the entrance. I introduce to you the Siberia Tower. Wow, amazing. From here you can see all the most typical landscapes of Jamaitia National Park. All folkloristic villages, lakes, swamps, forests, and I, as a volunteer, can play an active role in preserving and promoting all this heritage by cooperating and exchanging ideas with the local community. It's a very charming landscape. What else? I would really like to tell you about our pathways and our nature monuments and our cultural heritage more, but now it's time for me to go to Tsukiya National Park. So I leave my magic back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Have a nice trip. Thank you. See you soon. See you soon.
been traveling through all this year and you couldn't miss this place. No, I couldn't. <laughs> Welcome to Tsukiya National Park, which is one of the most interesting cultural places of the Holy Union. Mm -hmm. I will show you why. the road. Oh yeah, we are so close to Belarus. Okay. So in the past they used to go to Belarus with this railway, but now it's closed. This amazing place. Here we are at Chepkali State Reserve. This is the very heart of the Chepkali, the largest raised bog of whole Lithuania. Everywhere in the park you see pine woods, but here nature was at its best as for biodiversity. It all began with a post-glacial lagoon shores, was sand was blown away to form sandy dunes. Then, humidity and warmer temperatures led to an excess of moisture that, combined with precipitation, gave way to the formation of wetlands and their unique characteristics. Cool! And is it all about Sukiya National Park? Of course not, because nature is always connected with culture. How is it possible? I will show you how. Okay. <laughs> We are in Musteka. Oh. It's still part of the Zucchia National Park, famous for its beekeeping tradition. Okay. Wanna learn more about it? Of course, show me. Let's go. Bees will help us make candles. It's wax. It all starts with wax, taken directly from here, from the apiary. Wow. And what's next? Let's see. First, you need to have the instrument. Okay. Take it. You wrap it around yeah. the stick. Okay. And once you did that, just rub it to keep them together. Oh. Cool. And once you did this, the wax should be melted. Hey, look! It Whoa. is melted. It is melted. Good. Yes. So, let's make candles. Once the wax is melted, you can submerge the threads in the hot wax. One, two, three, more times until you get the final result. Here's a present for you, to thank oh. you for today. No, thanks to you, Adriana, for showing me Tukia National Park and all of these beautiful works. And I hope this candle will guide you through your journey. For sure, this will guide me, but not just me. This light will guide all of us.